Carlton as we know it today is rich in the history and modern traditions of many First Nations. And the Métis. These lands surrounding the Great Lake are steeped in indigenous history. As we gather today on these treaty lands, our Catholic social teachings call us in solidarity with our indigenous brothers and sisters. So honor and respect. Four directions. Lands. Waters. Plants. Animals. And ancestors. That walked before us. All of these wonderful elements of creation exist. Gifted to us by our Creator God. We acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for being stewards of this traditional territory.
supplementary programs. There will be some additional offerings for special education schools. Um, school students are working together with families for those programs for students to get placed in. Um, together? Andrew, they said it's good Together, many of our um, Catholic school councils are planning their year in events with the community and already planning for events in September. So over the past few weeks, uh, we have had the voting for the open CPIC positions. And this evening, I'm going to share with you CPIC members who are new um, recipients or candidates are that will serve on CPIC this year. So we had a Burlington position, an Oakland position, a North Halton position, and then the one large position. So the candidate who was awarded the position in Burlington is Emily Remnants. She is the chair of Corpus Christi's Catholic School Council. Um, and this is her bio. As a parent of a grade 10 student at Corpus Christi Secondary School, I am delighted to make a positive impact within the school community and passionate about education. More, moreover, I have served on the parent council at Corpus Christi Secondary School since September 2021 and in the position of chair since September 2022 where I have leveraged my strong leadership skills to promote collaboration between families, school staff, and administration. I have also led and organized parent council meetings and events, encouraging participation and engagement from parents in the wider school community. Prior to this, I served as the parent council chair at Holy Family Catholic Elementary School in Toronto from September 2010 to, September to June 2017 in this role, I led a greening initiative for the school yard, securing $100,000 in grants and funds through successful grant writing and fundraising efforts. I also developed and implemented programs and initiatives to support the school and students and assisted in managing the budget of the parent council. In my current role as an active member and engaged volunteer at Corpus Christi Secondary School, I led and organized various events and fundraisers, including her uniform sale. Through this experience, I've developed a strong understanding of the importance of efficient systems, and standard operating procedures to ensure the success of events and fundraising efforts. If selected for this position, I will bring my expertise in creating standard operating procedures and systems for fundraising ideas, including the development of a database of fundraising ideas and potential study initiatives. My goal would be to create accessible resources that can be utilized by council members to effectively implement initiatives at their own school. As someone who has experienced the challenges of navigating school council process as a new parent, I believe the access to these types of resources could be invaluable. Additionally, I've experienced in grant writing and securing funding, which I would be e eager to utilize in this role. With my background in marketing, attention to detail, and strong communication skills, I'm confident that it would be a valuable asset to CBEC. I'm committed to working collaboratively with all stakeholders to drive positive change and enhance the school experience for all members of the community. So congratulations to Emily Brennans. Our Oakville uh, parent is Joanne Cardova. Joanne's bio. I am a dedicated and accomplished professional with extensive experience in financial planning, community leadership, and education. I grew up in Burlington and attended elementary and secondary school there. After pursuing an honors BA in political science and economics from UT, I spent over 20 years working in the financial district in Toronto. Today, I'm a regional leader of wealth financial planning in Oakville, Burlington, where I'm known among my colleagues for commitment to serving, promoting, and developing others. My husband, two children, and I moved to Oakville, where we've resided for the past 13 years. Our children attend St. Andrews Catholic Elementary School, and our son continues education at Holy Trinity School starting in September. As they elect a seat pick of Oakville, I will work tirelessly uh, to represent the collective voice of parents in the Halton Catholic Church School Board and promote the focus of achieving, believing, and belonging. I am passionate about increasing peer involvement and serving as a link between homeschool, parish, and community to build a stronger, more vibrant community. In addition to my community involvement, I've demonstrated, demonstrated my commitment to philanthropy and volunteerism by leading the United Way Giving Foundation, raising dollars to support our local communities. I've also volunteered at my time to Food for Life, packaging food for those in need. When I'm not working to volunteer, I prioritize my health, fitness, and travel. I love exploring new places with my family and friends, and I'm always looking, looking, always on the lookout for exciting destinations to visit. I'm also dedicated to mentoring and educating others, and regularly share my insights and energy through social media platforms such as LinkedIn and Twitter. In all my endeavors, I am driven 
by deep set by a deep sense of purpose and a desire to make a positive impact in the world around me. I believe that through hard work, dedication, and commitment to serving others, we can build a better future for students in our communities. So congratulations to Joanne Cardova. And our North Halton um, recipient is Edosa Adams Idoli. So I nominate, so this is somebody's nomination and she was selected for North Halton. I nominate Edosa Adams Idode, who is a resident of Milton and an active community and considered to be a CPIC member for North Halton. Ms. Adams Idode is a lawyer with over 16 years experience practicing family and child protection law in Ontario. She holds a master's degree in dispute resolution from New York University and is a principal partner of Adams Gold Law Professional Corporation. Her professional experience includes working as a duty counsel advice to women impacted by domestic violence to clients in Halton, Toronto, and Peel. By supporting legally aided clients, she has demonstrated commitment to helping low income families to promote access to justice in Ontario. In 2022, she ran as one of the candidates for trustee in wards two and three of the municipal elections for the town of Milton, Halton Catholic District School Board. She is also ideal as a CFA candidate because she has championed and organized many community programs as chair of the Heritage and Social Connections Committee of the Association of Nigeria Community in Milton. These activities include arts and cultures programs to bring social connection. In February 2023, the children arts were exhibited in the gallery in Milton. As a firm believer in volunteerism and mentorship, Ms. Adams Ido remains focused on issues of equity and empowerment through systems change and community-based prevention programs for youth empowerment. She seats on the board of several not-for-profit organizations, such as the Board of African Caribbean Council of Halton, where she continues to encourage social and community responsibility. This includes advocating in schools across Halton region during Black History Month to educate elementary students on the power of our names. She believes in the value of Catholic education and that parents are the first educators for their children. In her professional capacity, she mentors law students, is a member of the executive branch of the Canadian Bar Association and presenter at the Mandatory Information Program since its inception in 2010. She also provides webinars on domestic violence and changes in family law to educate the community that family violence affects all of us. Based on her community engagement experience, she will bring um, to her bio a strong ethic for professionalism and ex excellent communication skills, ability to accept, exercise distraction and maintain comp confidentiality at all times, support equity initiatives to increase inclusion, empathy, sound judgment, and collaborative approach to the challenges faced by families, communities, and the Catholic education system. So congratulations to Adosa. And the at-large member, congratulations to Jerry Virgin for being our member, our at-large intern. And I'll read Opportunities. I'm pleased to submit my nomination for the upcoming CBIC 2023-25 term. I'm a proud Catholic parent of two children who are in grades nine and seven. As a current CBIC member, I currently serve as co-chair and have helped advance the mandate of CBIC in better, in better engaging parents and the Catholic school councils in many events and presentations. I would also work hard to bring the voice of the parents forward to the board level to advocate for the best educational experience possible for our students. Both my wife and I have also served on our local school council serving as chairs. We are also active in our community and church. I believe in fostering strong relationships between school, church, and families by providing a platform communication, engagement, and education for all stakeholders. I believe strongly in our Catholic education system and want to ensure it strives, survives, and thrives. My goal is to help by bringing parents and families together in meaningful ways. As a member of CPIC, I bring my faith, strong leadership and communication skills, business and financial academic, and strong desire to serve. My professional background is in financial services and real estate. I have an HBA in economics and urban studies. I look forward to continuing to serve our schools and families. Congratulations, Jerry. Okay. Do you have any questions with regards to being candidates? Okay, so what will happen now is Andrew will communicate with them um, probably tomorrow morning um, and making sure that they accept their position. And once that happens, then we'll let Lauren know, and then Lauren can uh, post this out 
on social media. Um, the candidates will be invited to come to next week's council chair meeting. Okay. Um, and finally, um, our programs events are almost wrapped up for our school plan and submitted events. And so Andrew will take all that information so that we can prepare our final report that needs to go to the Ministry of Education in July. Any questions? I have a general question, Nancy. And I, I, I don't think we can get into a lot of details tonight, but maybe for a future session, I'm just it's come to my with having two kids in high school, the topic of AI has come up a lot with uh, the submission of work by certain students in the class using AI in our programs. And I'm just wondering as a board, what our thoughts are go forward as to how we're going to deal with this. Are we going to accept that that's part of life now? And, you know, um, work along trying to assess people's knowledge by discussing what they've written or um, completing projects in class or like how we're going to work around. Um, the future, I guess, really. That's a great question, Jen. And we have had um, discussion on senior minute about it. I will take it back to the team in terms of, and what this is our reality. And the, the fact that there's many different tools available out there for students to basically, if some people want to call it cheating or whatever it is that they're doing. Having said that, is how do we educate the students how to use those tools in a professional manner? Because we want to help them build skills. They're going, going to be going on post secondary. <laughs> Okay, and the universities and colleges are having to face this as well. But we have to think about the types of questions we're asking the students that they can't just put into some sort of software and right. things send them information. It's how do you use that to help them develop those, those global competency skills that they need to have. Yeah. They're out there. Okay, it's not just in our secondary schools, it's not in the possible level. university level. It's how do we educate them? Mm -hmm. Because if they get caught, and it is considered plagiarism. We don't want to do it. But how do we teach them to use the tools that are available to them? Mm -hmm. And I think at some point, I don't even know if it will be plagiarism. Right. But um, and can they understand what they spit out and how they quality check it? Because it's not always accurate. So assessing um, what they submitted and do they understand it and have they, well, what method, how do we, what methodology are they taking to go through it and make sure that it's accurate? And, you know, maybe I'm reputation or. I think it does go back to it is it better be asked yes. and ask for them to respond to. Mm -hmm. And they can type something in, Google it, use one of those tools, and then it just spits it out. Then we have to talk about it. Yeah, right. Agreed. Mm -hmm. right. So we need to pick it up. Yeah. Okay, but I will bring it back to yeah. the to provide more wholesome response to Yeah, that. I presume this is going to be a big topic for the board in the next few years. It may be something that we want to discuss in the future. Council may have that's the board's approach to this. Great. Anyone else have any questions for Anthony? Thank you very much. Okay, next up is our trustee update. Um, not sure. Okay, um, Trustee Kennedy will provide an update tonight. Thank you. So there's been two um, uh, board meetings since the last week picked the meeting. Uh, the board meetings are April 18th and May 2nd. On April 18th, I'll start with that board meeting first. We had some senior staff updates. Uh, one of them was regarding utilities update and carbon emissions presentation. 90% um, of Ontario electricity is from low emission renewable resources, and we're uh, proud to say that Halton is a, is a leader. Um, each year, all 72 school boards in Ontario are ranked on the energy efficiency of their building operations, and HDDSB was ranked number two in 2022, uh, we were number four in 2021, um, and we've been in the top 15 every year in the study um, since then published in 2007. Another key item at that meeting was the uh, um, policy action reports on strategic planning process. Uh, one of the roles of trustees is to develop a multi-year strategic plan aimed at achieving the board's goals and annually reviewing that plan with the director of education. Uh, these plans are high-level statements of where the CDSB wants to be in the, wants to be in a certain time frame. Uh, the MYSP is on track and consultations are ongoing. We're currently in phase two, which is the gathering information phase. Um, the next stage would be uh, phase three, which would be developing the MISP. Um, tomorrow, there's a stakeholder consultation at the board meeting, stakeholder consultation, consultation plan that's being brought to the board meeting tomorrow. 
Another item at uh, the April 18th meeting was uh, an information report from Superintendent Aaron Moss, uh, the release of the 2023-2024 Grants for Student Needs GSN. Uh, provincially, the GSN is projected to uh, at 27.1 billion, which is about a 2.7% increase over the current year. That's about an average funding for people of $13,125. Uh, two items that the HDBSB will receive funding for, just two examples, are summer mental health for funding for students. Um, this ensures continuity over the summer uh, for students who need this resource, and also funding for students with special education needs over the summer as well. Um, staff presented changes that impact ministry funding for the 2022-2023 school year. Uh, total revenues and staff expenses are currently being examined to determine the overall budgetary impact to the HDSB. And uh, staff will present those findings uh, for the board meeting in June. Also on April 18th, there was an inf information report uh, regarding OXA, which is the Ontario Catholic School Trustees Association. They had their annual AGM from April 27th to the 29th this year. Our board presented four resolutions that passed unanimously. Uh, these resolutions were almost all related to funding. Um, one example is, uh, is a petition to the Ministry of Education to create a dedicated capital funding stream to improve accessibility in schools in line with the latest Ontario Building Code standards. Also at that meeting, there was a presentation, uh, sorry, uh, now into the, into the main uh, presentation. Uh, board meeting. Um, presentation titled Faith in Our Schools, Our Catholic Schools Bringing Faith to Life. Um, this involves reading the promise, which is the uh, the pastoral letter for Catholic education released by the Assembly of Catholic Bishops in Ontario in 2018. And this called on us to ensure that our schools are places where each student has the opportunity to encounter Jesus each and every day. The HDDSP document titled Our Catholic Schools and Family for Question was passed out. This is from 2019 and it was presented on how it aligns with the HDDSP's vision of a model learning community widely recognized as distinctively Catholic. And there's four key areas, which are Catholic learning environment, Catholic curriculum, Catholic community, and Catholic staff. Um, there was a lot in the presentation, it was very, very good. But one thing I wanted to, to share was about Catholic social teaching, service citizenship, and vocation and career development. Uh, so, Catholic schools encourage young people to reflect on their vocation and consider how they will make a positive contribution not only to the community to which they belong, but also to the wider world. And so there's been some outreach programs to the community on behalf of our students and staff. Um, one was um, schools that made hundreds of paper flowers and snowflakes for the winter and spring and Spire Oak campaign for Hope and Alive. Uh, this program, uh, Inspire Oak, provides hope and encouragement to the elderly in our community through simple acts of love and care. There was also a 24 hour fast. Students and staff participated in not one, but two fasts uh, in Lent to support people in the local community in the world. Um, and lastly, um, our, our Catholic school staff, um, staff members are an integral part of the Catholic school community and to see and to promote and maintain its ethos, which is foundational for the teaching and learning uh, processes and practices in the classroom. Other notable items at the last board meeting and in between meetings were uh, many trustees uh, met last week with four MPPs at the Thomas Burton Continuing Education Center. Uh, the meeting went well. Presentations were made regarding HDESB schools, including funding. Also, another item: trustees have been visiting schools in all regions to meet with staff, and these visits are are ongoing. And lastly, there is a Canadian Catholic School Trustees Association. Um, they're hosting an annual AGM convention in June, in June 1st to the 3rd in Saskatoon, and the HDESB will have representation at that event. And that's it for the update. Uh, Brandon, last two board meetings. Thank you, Trustee Kennedy. Does anyone have any questions? Great. Uh, we'll move on to our standing items. Um, first up is our WAPSI update. Uh, Denise, you're online. I am. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so um, my um, my update is uh, based on the uh, OAPSI conference of, uh, in April. Um, it was a uh, it was a large conference held up in uh, Algonquin Lakeshore and in Kingston, and as I mentioned, I think in the previous meeting, um, there was um, a number of, uh, I would say, uh, exceptional uh, points, highlights in that particular weekend. Can you hear me? Sorry. One was um, the uh, the speaker um, that I certainly highly recommend that we perhaps look at, and I did mention this, I think, to Jen before, Dr. Josephine Lombardi. Um, who did an absolutely amazing presentation called Deepening Our Faith as Engaged Parents. And um, 
it was it was quite uh, I've never seen her speak I've just heard of her and um, I think just her ability to weave um, faith and um, parenting together is uh, well worth having her as a speaker um, at perhaps at council of chairs or something else so her contact information can be actually found on her her website so to be able to contact her it, it's um, through just looking her up basically Dr. Josephine Lombardi and then um, you fill out a, a form on, on her website. Um, they also had a um, Teresa Kennedy as a speaker uh, on mental health matters. She's um, the co-director of school mental health and uh, a supervisory officer for uh, Algonquin Lakeshore. And then, of course, Miguel Martinez, who I know we've had speak um, as well at our um, at some of our functions. Um, the um, next the meeting, meeting, meeting for me meeting would be, oops, sorry, oh, I have some feedback, is uh, June 16th uh, and 17th to the next board director's meeting. And that's it for me. Thanks very much, Anybody have any questions for Denise? Great. Okay, on to our subcommittees. Um, first one up is the School Council Support Committee. Uh, we have nothing to report at this time. Do we want to discuss maybe the slides? Are we doing the slides later? Do you have any mention of the Yeah. Oh, it's later. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so no update. Um, second up is the Parent Community Engagement Committee. Um, since our last meeting, we do not have an update as well, other than to say that we uh, thank you everybody for submitting your votes for the Volunteer of the Year. Um, we did come up with a clear winner for each family of schools. Um, which will be announced at our council trips meeting next week. Um, and last up is the social media committee. Lauren? Uh, yeah, so I have a couple of updates. Jerry, is everything going through it, or is that just step on those of us in the slide? <laughs> um, no, no, go ahead. And we can definitely not be reviewing the, the slide on the screen. Okay. Um, okay, so the, the major. Um, development from the last two weeks was that we have a Instagram account now and um, just with the way that sort of Twitter is going with a lot of like misinformation and just dumpster fire type stuff and um, trying to just move away from Twitter a little bit and Instagram tends to have a little bit better um, engagement these days so just trying to kind of pick up the following there so in two weeks we've got a whole 65 plant followers so working on it I'm trying to I want to get that up to at least a few hundred but it's still uh, still early days um, once the uh, volunteers and the new student members are public, I'll just post over the next few weeks to highlight some of those and some of the nominees and that sort of thing as well. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like the major the major update. And then Jerry, I, I gave Jerry some stats on sort of our top tweets from the year that's in the slide deck. So we'll, we'll, yeah. that kind of needs to slide up through with it. But um, but yeah, it's been a pretty good year from social media wise, with a lot of really good growth across all of our accounts. So that's been that's been fun. Thanks very much for that update. You guys have done a great job building up the social media. So thanks very much. Um, and, and maybe I'll just take this opportunity to ask all CPIC members. Last year in June, we kind of took a bit of time to discuss um, what our goals were for the coming year, um, what kind of committees we thought would be best utilized by uh, CPIC. Um, we will have our new members um, at our meeting in June. Um, to listen in. Um, we don't have to make any final decisions, but I think it's a good time to kind of reflect back on what went well and what maybe some of the um, future goals for the subcommittees could be, will be, or could be. And then, you know, obviously the new committees can make a final decision um, when they gather, but um, I think it'd be good to start paving that way so that we can hit the ground running in September again. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is the CPIC representation of board committees. Um, bullying prevention, you guys have an update? Uh, yeah, so we had a, um, we had a meeting uh, last week of April, I think it was on the 26th. Um, so the two uh, major event, major topics that were covered in that meeting was, um, there was a presentation from um, Sita G.R. G. Herman and uh, Superintendent Cordero of Denolfo, who did a presentation on possibly developing a, um, a bullying incident reporting tool um which is distinct distinct from the um hate and bias reporting tool that we currently have so be a number of other boards have versions of it it's something we discussed at the last few meetings uh so that's being investigated right now and discussed to see if we can correct something together there 
Uh, and the other um, major topic that we went through was um, feedback on the bullying prevention intervention plan. Um, so uh, CF had gone through it and the, now our committee was going through it to, um, to give some feedback that we're going to take back to, um, to the working group. Thanks, Laura. Um... The de-streaming board committee is the next one up on the agenda. Um, I sit on that committee. We had a meeting last week um, to discuss what is working with de-streaming, um, what kind of things need further support or consideration, um, such as you know, future more PD perhaps for teachers, um, special education supports, things like that. And then also we took some time to look um, backwards and forwards about some of the curriculum changes that have, have happened and some that are um, expected to happen in the next couple of years. Um, so it was really just a sharing of best practices. It's a, it, it's a really great group. Um, there's a lot of, um, there's a good cross section of, uh, people on the, on the subcommittee. Um, I'm not sure if it's continuing on Nancy next year, if this is kind of the end of the road for de-streaming, but, um, do you have any update? Do you have any? I don't think it's the end of the road for no? the committee. Okay. Yeah. So there's, I think there's still work to be done there and feedback as we see the how those students are faring and what are some of the challenges we're still facing. I know that some of the boards are piloting the grade 10 de-streaming. We are not one of them, but um, I guess that's expected to come down from the ministry and uh, we're starting next year to be two pilot that with a couple of boards. Um, so that's about all the update on for de-streaming. Um, the next uh, board committee is mental health, which I also sit on. Um, we have not had a meeting since our March meeting. We have one coming up on June the 7th, so I have an update for that. Um, the last board subcommittee is the Regionalized Specialized Programming Committee. Anna, do you have an update? Uh, not yet. We have a meeting. There will be a meeting with the Thank you very much. Okay, on to our discussion items this evening. The first item on the agenda is the um, ICE Symposium Report. Um, so Jerry and Cherish and Nancy attended the ICE Symposium, which was held last week, um, and they are just going to review some of the um, I guess highlights of the symposium. Yes, and uh, uh, Nancy already and shared um, a good, uh, good high level overview of what the uh, symposium was all about uh, in her opening remarks. So um, um, I'll, um, I'm going to share uh, Cherish's um, uh, notes from, from the symposium. And unfortunately, she was uh, meant to be here tonight, but but unfortunately um, was not able to make it. So I'm um, happy to share um, Cherish's thoughts from the, the couple of days. Um, so it was my first time attending the ICE Symposium. I didn't really know what to expect. Thankful to have had the opportunity to participate in the symposium. It was nice to connect and network with teachers, administrators, students, and parents from different boards within Ontario as well as priests and other ICE partner organizations to discuss adult faith formation and Catholic education. For me, as this was my first uh, year in CPEC as a parent representative, it was an opportunity to learn what faith formation and Catholic education is and means within Ontario and learn what we do in Halton. Also, I was able to reflect on my own journey of faith formation. A few takeaways that I had notes during the symposium and from our table discussions were, the journey to faith formation begins with a connection People need to feel part of a larger story in our schools and our board, ensuring we provide a horizon of hope, meaning, promise to the students, a message that they are enough and they belong. An opportunity to increase the presence of faith and religion within the schools at both high school and elementary levels, bringing the basics back in the teachings in schools such as traditional Catholic and religious songs. With the 10 principles of faith formation, which were shared as part of the symposium. The principle of leadership is essential in the succession and sustainability of the faith formation journey, not only in the self-engagement phase, but also in the mutual engagement and transformational engagement phases. Referring to the sacrament of reconciliation as reconciliation versus confession, the term confession focuses on acknowledging our sins and wrongdoings. And with the sacrament, it is about reconciling with God, restoring our faith relationship. An interesting reference to the symbol of a sunflower relating to reconciliation. A sunflower, which orients itself and turns it towards the light or the sun, of course, the sun in the sky, similar to reconciliation that we would experience 
as we re reorient ourselves to the Son, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Overall, there's an opportunity to strengthen the partnership between the school parish and home to support adult faith formation. I look forward to continuing to learn what we do in Halton to support our board faith formation initiatives. So, thank you, Chair. So that's actually very well, very well written. Um, and uh, what I'm going to add, um, just, I mean, just about a whole lot more add from what Nancy and Chair shared. Um, but I really like the way Dr. Joe Gowdy, our keynote uh, for a couple of days, um, how she framed um, where we are right now and what the potential pathways forward looks like. I like the, I like how she set, kind of set the table at the very beginning of the symposium. And basically, she put it this way: um, future pathways for schools to engage. Um, number one, uh, reconfessionalism which would be a return to how things were. Number two, secularization or letting go of Catholic identity. Now, these two essentially were seen as non-starters. Um, third one, Christian value education, looking for common ground between faith and culture. And then finally, number four, Recontextualization, or to put it more simply, reimagining. And what this aims to do, this pathway, is to reinterpret the Catholic faith in a contemporary culture setting that offers new meaning. Um, so I thought, again, it was a great way to kind of set the table for what followed for the next, you know, couple of days. Because um, I think we, I think we do find just and this is just me speaking now, um, not speaking on behalf of our guest speaker. But we find ourselves in a crossroads of thinking Catholic education and um, this, this reimagining of what the future looks like. Um, it, it's great to talk about that. Um, from, from there, we went on to talking about the, the 10 drivers um, of this of this conflict forward. Um, I'll quickly name them just, just so you get a sense of, of uh, uh, what she was talking about um, and cherish reference as well. Um, number one, the culture of participation. Number two, connect, uh, connection to vocational context. Number three, holistic design. Number four, time factors. Five, connecting with tradition. Number six, companioning. Number seven, modeling in community. Number eight, strategic alignment. Number nine, engagement with leadership. And number 10, uh, theological underpinnings uh, based on the post Vatican II stance. Um, so that just there's there's obviously a lot that goes behind each of those. Um, we're not obviously going to get into that tonight, but if anyone's curious or wants to know more, I'd be happy to chat further about what we learned uh, while we we're there. And then finally, um, uh, Dr. Ann Walsh. 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 Thank you, Dr. Ann Walsh. Um, she did a beautiful piece on reconciliation, as again was was mentioned by both Nancy and Cherish, and uh, I thought it was it was you know. Very apropos, um, especially for us as we look forward to this path of reimagining Catholic education. Because um, I, I think it, it's going it's to take some, again, me speaking, it's going to take some some reconciliation to to do that, to forge that new path. Um, because we've got uh, many many minds at the table, and, and bringing them together at times is difficult. But um, I think part of that process is that reconciliation. So I look forward to saying. What, what we practically take forward from the symposium and and bring it into life and as and as the parents, you know, and I was there obviously with with the parent lens on, um, you know, look forward to you know uh, what we will do as a as a board to uh, bring all this excuse me to life. So it's great for that couple of days. Thanks very much for including myself and cherish. Yeah, great to be there. Any questions about the symposium? Thanks very much, Jerry and Cherish, for that thorough overview of the symposium. Um, item 6.2 on the agenda is the Council Chairs meeting, which is being held next Wednesday, May the 24th. Um, we discussed this meeting um, at our last CBIC meeting uh, in terms of a potential agenda. Um, however, as Trustee Kennedy alluded to, um, there's been some, uh, there is some 
work going on right now with the strategic plan that is time sensitive. And um, as a result, we are going to have to um, move some of the items that were on the proposed agenda for this meeting um, to our next um, council chairs meeting. The majority of the meeting will be devoted to gathering stakeholder information. Um, I believe that it's being led by a third party external firm that is helping with the strategic plan. Um, so the format of the meeting will be, I believe, the first half an hour or so will be the regular intros from the director of education, the trust chair of the board. Um, we will introduce new CPIC members and the volunteer of the year uh, recipients. And then I think we're moving right into strategic plan um, and that will take up the balance of the evening. Um, are we starting an event earlier too, Nancy? Yes, we are, Jen. So the meeting was going to be 6.30 where we gather and networking and then 7 would start. We're actually going to start the meeting at 6.30. But by 7.15, um, Josh and the Mass New City Group can help with the multi year strategic plan stakeholders. And it will still go to approximately 8.30? 8.30, yeah. Okay. It's, it's going to be a hard stop at 8.30. Okay. Okay. So, so um, CPIC members, if you can arrive around 6.15, 6.20, um, it being at Slim and Christie, at a school in Kevin's school. Okay. And so um, it, it's all going to be set up. Andrea is working with the school team. And Marie is the vice principal there. Um, we'll be ready to go for um, 6 30. Okay. Great. Um, last discussion item on the agenda is consent committee slides for council chairs. Um, Jerry, did you want to walk through what's been put together or is somebody able to put them up so we can look at them? Yeah, put them up. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So what we asked each of the uh, subcommittees to do was to summarize uh, key accomplishments of the year. Uh, I thought it was important to share at our last Council of Chairs of the Year uh, to kind of reflect back and see what have we accomplished, you know, as, as a committee um, and uh, and to maybe to celebrate a little bit, to highlight it a little bit. Um, so to that end, we asked for the bullet points for basically just one slide per subcommittee, and and then at the um, at the council chairs, um, I think it'd be great to have representatives from each subcommittee come up and just speak to it a little bit. Um, thank you, John. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Lauren. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're not there. Oh, you thought you. Okay, uh, awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just just to bring some some uh, some color commentary. So you know, so if you guys would be comfortable doing that, that'd be fantastic. We'll send you the slides ahead. If, if you get yes. sick of hearing me talk, yeah. about. we'll send you the slides ahead of time so you can go through. <laughs> do you want to go through the highlights? I'm not sure if there's any yeah, other events. Do, do, yeah. Are they yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Look at. Oh. All right. So yeah, I think it's. Scroll along. So I I thought I'd start by just briefly um, introducing those should be animated like that or maybe animation. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd you know highlight who were the members of the various uh, subcommittees. Um, and just you, and you can see it was, it's actually uh, great. So there's a great cross section in, in each of them from both from from geography as well as from um, uh, senior men. Uh, there as well. And then get right into so so parent engagements. Uh, as you see there, uh, the, the speaker series, uh, both our in person and virtual ones that we held throughout the year at different um, uh, key points throughout throughout the the, the school and, uh, and and church year, of course. Um, and then then our volunteer of the year awards, which we have um, reintroduced something the Worked hard um, to revisit uh, what, what we used to do what, years ago. We had we had volunteer awards and gave it a gave it a fresh look and view and, and uh, what great new programs that. So um, that's that's a we made one of the a great highlights of the year. Um, so again, yeah. So so I you comfortable to speak to those pieces. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think those were the key things that added, right? Like those were the yeah. 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 You, you, you think we're missing something? But you don't need to go into a lot of detail. It's really just to review kind of what we did this. Yeah. 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 We really just wanted to get, get a few minutes per slide. I think it's nothing, yeah. nothing too lengthy. Yeah. 
Um, next would be our school council support. Um, and again, I know, and, and Joel, thank you for putting that together. Um, and you had great notes in there about several each of these points. Um, so what I would suggest is that those, you know, that, that initial verbiage becomes the your speaker notes, basically. Yeah, because it describes them very well, um, which is visually, I just thought it yep. limited to this. That yeah, makes sense to you. Okay. And then, yeah, and then guys, I mean, before next week, if, if anyone has any edits or changes or additions, just let me know. We'll update the slides. And then finally, social media. Um, uh, Lauren, of course, will walk us through um, our, our journey this year. I don't know, Lauren, you can tell me what you think about this one, but I, I kind of crammed in a, a fair bit on there. Uh, but there's a little stats and stuff, but uh, if you think it works, uh, we just do the individual and then you'll speak to Frank uh, the, the highlights. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So with that, that'll be our three presentations. Very brief. Just you know, a few minutes each, five minutes stops each. And yeah. Any thoughts, questions? Oh, okay. Awesome. Yes, oh, So there's, there was a four presentations. Were two of them internal? Slides down now. Um, Jimmy Federico, I think, was on two. Do you know the cost of the two that were in the circle? Yes. Um, so we had Chris Lowell, I believe, of $750. Something like that. Okay. It's right around that. Get on take 100. Probably didn't take anything. Um, and the uh, ROI was 50 or 1,000. That's right there. Okay. Um, are you online? And, uh, if Jordan is not available because last time I talked to her, she was sure going to be able to be at my council choice meeting. Can you help Denise with the distribution of the volunteer of the year awards, please? Okay, um, that's it for discussion items. Um, are there any other business that anyone wants to raise future agenda items? We have one more specific meeting this year. Um, which will be held on June 5th, three weeks. Before we conclude this evening. All right, then I'll ask uh, Superintendent Alpha to leave us in closing prayer, please. Closing prayer that I'll do this evening is a prayer of gratitude for our mothers and happy Monday to to all the mothers that are on the sea deck. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good and gentle God, we pray in gratitude for our mothers and for all the women of theory who have joined with you in the wonder of bringing forth new life. You who became human through a woman, grant to all mothers the courage they need need to face the unsuited future that life of the children always brings. Give them strength to live and to be loved in return, not perfectly, but humanly. Give them the faithful support of a spouse, family, and friends as they care for the physical and spiritual growth of their children. Give them joy and delight in their children to sustain them through their trials of motherhood. Most of all, give them the wisdom to turn to you for help when they need it most. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing you next Wednesday at the Council's Show. Thank you. What's that? Now you would go to the other day, but you're going to do something. Say that again. I've been down with the bills with all the different between me and endorser now. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> not putting you guys beside each other, I'll tell you that much. So looking forward to having her. Are you going to tell her? Should I tell her? Yes. Should I tell her? Well, I mean, you can. I'll tell her officially tomorrow. So, yeah, I figured you guys were in some kind of group because your hair is identical. We're in Brooklyn, Nigeria. Yes. In Melbourne. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't know if, you know, you had some... Yeah. 
fundraising group or whatever, right? Because you, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. see? <laughs> yeah, no, 